Hi everyone. I am, I'm not taking any responsibility for this. Uh, this is a total disclaimer, and this is just for example, and uh, and like just a test. Uh, so let's go from there. So let's say you wanted you got a generator, uh, like a 5,000 amp, a 6,000 amp, something like that, like a generator like this. Okay, for instance, and it's a 115, uh, just a regular household. Uh, 115 uh, voltage so it's got a plug like that on it okay now let's say you wanted to power up your whole house with that let's say you wanted to get your hot water heater going let's say you wanted to get your heat going let's say you wanted to uh, get some uh, like uh, some outlets going in the house and a couple of lights is it possible do you have to run an extension cord for each thing you want or can you hook this into your main breaker box well, for example purposes, you could hook it into your main breaker box, and I'm going to show you one way to do it, probably the safest way to do it. There's a couple of precautions we want to take, because number one, if we just put the power from this into your main breaker box, you can, you're going to send electric out of your house, down the electric wires, and let's say a tree is taken down uh, from Sandy, uh, some wires, you could like short out, you short out your generator. You could also, like if there's linemen working down the line, they're not expecting the wire to have any electricity in it and they could get hurt or killed. So you would want to isolate your house from the power grid before you hooked any power generating device into your breaker box. And I'm gonna show you one way to isolate your house so that you can hook a generator into your breaker box and power parts of your house. Now, most houses have what they call three-wire service. Let's say 100-amp three-wire service or 150-amp three-wire service. And the three-wire is 220, and that would have two legs. A generator like this will be able to hook in one leg, either or, at a time but not both so major things like a whole house air conditioner or a dryer or a range or an oven you're not going to be able to power up with a generator like this and the method I'm going to show you if you had a 220 generator yes you would be able to power up those large things with the method I'm going to show you so that being said Let's go to the breaker box and show you what we're going to do. But, but first, before I take you to that, I want to tell you one very important thing about generators, and that is the oil level. These small engines are known to consume oil. Oil being the lubricating method for small engines without oil you're going to seize the engine and the generator is basically going to turn into a boat anchor useless hunk of junk the most important thing is checking your oil level every time you gas it up you run out of gas it's not a big deal you just put more gas in it you run out of oil your motor is going to seize up and it's shot. The whole generator's shot. Forget about it. You're not going to be able to get it fixed. You're basically going to have to buy a new generator. Well, you might be able to get it fixed, but not quickly and, uh, and not cheaply. And it may indeed be cheaper just to buy a new generator. In this particular generator, the oil is this yellow screw cap right here. And uh, to check the oil level, you unscrew this. If it's stuck, you could stick a, a screwdriver or a butter knife in between those two ears and just uh, counterclockwise for loose. Then you're going to look in the hole, and you're going to want the oil to be like at the bottom of the threads. I don't know if I can get an angle. You're going to want the oil to be at the bottom, right where you see that oil is that honey golden stuff. And then another important thing would be to change the oil, and that you would uh, open up here, and the oil would come out, and then you would put that back in, and uh, and fill it up with oil up to the bottom of the thread, just like it is. It's the most important thing. If you don't keep oil in your generator, you're not going to have a generator for long, and then uh, you know you're not going to be able to brag and boast to everybody. All right. So that being shown to my viewers, let's take a little stroll inside 
Because what I have done, and I'm going to show you exactly, is I keep the generator outside, and that is the only place to keep a generator, because you don't want the gases from the exhaust in your house. It's poisonous carbon monoxide. And a heavy-duty extension cord. Nobody may even be able to find an extension cord this heavy-duty, but I have one. But any old extension cord would do. And it's a grounded extension cord. That particular generator has a floating ground, what they call a floating ground. So it's not real important that you get the ground correct, uh, which wire is the ground. But if your generator didn't have a floating, what they call a floating ground, I would seriously recommend that you indeed identify which is ground on your generator with a continuity tester. And when you hook into your breaker box, you would indeed hook the ground to the ground and the, uh, and the power to the power. But, uh, but given that fact, uh, let me just go back out to the light for a second and show you the uh, the implement we're going to use to hook into the breaker box. Then I'm actually going to start this generator and hook into the breaker box. So I got some light in there to show you guys what we do to the breaker box. But let me at first show you the rig I made, which is basically this. And on one end, we have, let me swing the camera around so I know I get good shots. On one end, I have a plug, okay, and I have used a, uh, a cord with a red and white so it's easily identifiable which is the ground and which is the power. And on the other end of this rig, I have two alligator clips, and again, color matched. You would want to be very, very careful that you never plug this into a live outlet because if these two happen to be touching, you would make quite a big spark and possibly get burned or hurt. So this, this device is only used when we uh, are hooking the generator into the circuit box. Otherwise, there really would be no reason uh, to use this except for like test, uh, test purposes like jumper wires. Uh, if you were uh, testing some electric circuits somehow and you needed uh, something like this. All right, so let me, again, let me, um, give me a second. I'm going to be right back with the lights on in that room so I can show you how to isolate your house from the power grid and then hook your generator into your main breaker panel so that you can indeed power up sections of your house uh, and outlets and, and built-in lights and uh, hot water heaters and um, oil burners and uh, gas water heaters and stuff like that. And um, with this method, like if you had an oil-fired water heater, it would just come on and, and, and start heating your water as long as the generator was on. If you had a gas water heater, you would have to probably relight the pilot light. After you energize the water heater, you'll probably have to relight the pilot light unless you have a newer water heater that has like a piezoelectric pilot. You, it, they don't actually have a pilot light. They have that little clicky spark, like the click, 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 like the barbecue lighters. So that, that you wouldn't actually need to light the pilot light because it doesn't have a pilot light. But if you do have a pilot light, you will have to light it because when they lose electricity, the pilot light goes out as a safety, uh, as a fail safe. Um, so if y your power is out to your hot water, your gas hot water heater with a pilot light, the pilot light's going to go out. So when you repower it, you're going to have to relight the pilot light. The instructions for relighting the pilot light are on a sticker right on the front bottom of the water heater right near where the pilot light is. Follow the instructions for relighting the pilot light. And you would have to do that uh, like if you took the generator off or if it ran out of gas, something like that, you'll have to relight that pilot light each time power is lost to the water heater. All right, so like I said, be back in a minute with some lights and show you how to directly hook in to your breaker box safely. And again, it's just a... Uh
just for testing. Alrighty, my friends, so we have the generator safely placed outside. We're gonna kick this baby over. We're gonna turn the gas on. We've already checked our oil, it's good. And we're gonna give her a little choke. And we're gonna. Oh, I gotta put the switch on. There's a little switch. Let me show you guys. There's a little. Always forget the switch. Now she'll lope a little bit. Until she warms up. And then what we're going to do is plug the extension cord. All right, my friends. So here is the part where you isolate your house from the power grid. What you're going to want to do is open up your breaker box. And let's say this is the cover... Let's say this is your breaker box. Okay, here's the cover. There's screws, a series of screws. There's usually like six or eight screws. But although you may have screws missing, you may have like one or two. But anyway, you, you're going to want to like hold with one hand and take the screws out. And the reason you hold it is because when you take that last screw out, you don't want it like falling down and shutting all your breakers off as it's falling. So you're going to hold in one hand, take the screws out with the other, and then at one shot, pull it like straight off. Because again, all your breakers are going to be in here. And if it, it goes crooked, you're going to like knock a whole bunch off. It's just a pain in the ass. So anyway, take your cover off. And now you're going to be confronted with something that looks like this. The main breaker is the big, buddy, the big juicy one, usually up at the top, is your main breaker. So what you're going to want to do is flick it off. This, there's a switch on it. You flick the switch to off. And then there's like one screw, which in this particular breaker, it's in that black hole right in the middle there. It's a regular blade screw. And that screw holds the breaker onto the panel. So you loosen that screw up. It, it doesn't come out. It just lo You just loosen it up and it stays in, in its hull. Once you have loosened that screw up, you take the breaker on one end, because you'll look and you'll see that one end has these like, these shoes, you can see them there, that clip onto the bottom of the breaker right there. You can kind of see the mark. So the opposite end, the opposite end, you grab and pull it straight, and that'll unclip it from the rails in the back, the power rails, and then you can take it out of the shoes and just pull it away. Now, because see, these two big wires come right from outside. So now we're off the grid. The house is separated from the grid. So there's no risk of our electricity going out in the grid and making the neighbor's lights dim or getting short-circuited where a tree branch is or hurting a lineman working down the line. We've, we have separated our house from the grid. At this point, what we can do, and I'm going to show you down here what's going on. These are the contacts for the circuit breakers, and they're actually live right now. I wouldn't want to be touching those because I'd get quite a shock. And, and these are our two legs, one side and the other side. And each side is 120 volts. So, like, they feed every other breaker. So this is on one, that's another, that's another, that's another. So it, they alternate up, all right? So we got two legs. And like half your house is going to be on one leg, and the other half of the house is going to be on the other leg. You will have to identify yourself in your own house, like what leg your cable TV flat screen is on, what leg your hot water heater is on, and you may what leg your refrigerator is on. And you may indeed have to alternate, like we alternate, like an hour running the refrigerator and the kitchen lights. And then when we want to go in the den and watch TV, we move it to the other leg and I'm going to show you how we do that we move it to the other leg and that gets the TV and then the hot water heater comes on and uh, and then back to the other leg for the fridge and the furnace so we get heat in the house so we alternate back and forth you'll have to identify what is hooked up to which leg in your house and that's just the way it is 
If you had a 220 generator, you could power both legs at the same time. But with the 120 generator, we're only doing one leg at a time. It's just too much for the generator. Okay, so now we take that device that I showed you before that I made with the alligator clips. And the last thing we're going to do is plug it in. I shouldn't actually be showing you the plug right now. That's the last thing that we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is take the black alligator clip and clip it to what we're going to call the ground or the neutral which is that bare copper wire that's coming directly from the outside. You can see the two big black ones that go to the main breaker. Okay, those are our two legs with the power in them. And then wrapped around it is a whole bunch of bare copper wire, which is like the ground, the earth, the neutral. So you're going to put the black alligator clip on that. And maybe you're going to... Uh, I'm doing this one-handed with a flashlight. Maybe you're going to like jiggle it a little bit to make sure you got a good connection. Then you're going to take the red alligator clip, or the second alligator clip, and you're going to clip it on one of the leg lugs. We're going to call them lugs, all right? So you see I have it on the top lug there. So that actually powers, like, these lights in the basement. Um, although it's not powering the cable box or the flat screen TV, it is running my water heater right now, my hot water heater. And, um, all right, so that's like... And then what I could do later on, I could unclip this. Of course, I would unplug it from the plug first because I don't want to. But I'll actually show you because it actually makes a little spark. I would unplug it and move it down to the second one and alligator clip it on there. Now I'm running the other half of the house. And you'll see that the lights indeed went out in this room. But my cable box came on and I could turn the flat screen TV on at this point if I wanted to. So I'm going to put it back to the first one just to show you because I want some light in here to finish up my video. So I'm going to unclip it. So, okay, so there we go. So actually what I would do though is I would unplug this, do my clipping up here, and then plug it in because it's less sparks that way. <laughs> And then if I, if I wanted to unclip this up here first, I would unplug it here, then unclip it here, and then plug it back in there, okay? So basically that, that is where I would rather have the sparks than, than up here in my face, but I just wanted to show you guys for demonstration purposes. And then this black one I would hardly ever touch in this process. It's just this red one that I'm flipping from leg to leg. Understood. So the house is off the grid because the main breaker is pulled. And the portable generator is powering different legs of the house depending on where I place the alligator clip. And we had some success clamping both legs together and powering that up and getting the whole house up and running. Although uh, we have to be very careful that we don't turn uh, lights on in the house because we'll overload the generator. Although we are using, instead of lights, we're using like LED stuff and, uh, and lanterns and stuff like that for lights. And uh, doing this to keep all the hot water, the heat, and the internet, and the televisions on. Because it's Halloween and the kids are having a couple of friends over who are basically in houses without any electricity. And they haven't even been able to like charge their stuff or take showers or anything. So we're having a couple of kids' friends over to... Uh, enjoy the luxury of a hot shower and a warm meal and be able to charge their phones and check out their Facebook pages. So, uh, I'm not quite sure how safe uh, that is, but it seems to be working, so uh, we're going to go with it. Worst comes to worst, it'll blow the breaker in the generator and then I'll just uh, stop doing it. But uh, it seems to be uh, about 20 minutes in and we're okay, so... Again, we're not uh, putting on any unnecessary lights or anything like that because we're going to overload and we just want this energy to go to important stuff like hot water and heat, internet, uh, cable television, and, uh, and I want to stress that to, uh, to anyone watching this video that uh, either way, it's really important not to leave any unneeded items on because you're just going to overload your generator and stress out other things because uh, I mean let's say a fridge right it's designed to work on a certain voltage 
um, and it's designed to work a long time on, on that certain voltage. But let's say your generator is putting out like 10% less, 10% less voltage. You're going to like stress the motor in the refrigerator. So let's say like six months down the road, your refrigerator blows out and you got to replace it. And uh, you're not going to put two and two together that, hey, you know, six months ago I ran it for a week on a generator. Um, but that's probably the reason. So we don't want to run any lights or anything in rooms where no one is or have a light on when we could have a battery operated LED lantern on or something like that. So just pay attention to that stuff and uh, everything's going to be all right. And again, this is just for test purposes, but it is a way to test if your hot water heater still works, if your furnace still works, if indeed what I'm saying actually works. But I, in no way do I want anyone to actually do this, you know, quote unquote, because uh, I'm not telling anybody to do it. I'm just like showing you that it, uh, you know, it probably has been done in the past. So take it from there. Take it for whatever it means. But I assume no liability. And uh, But I will say if someone was going to do something like this, this is probably the safest way to do it. And, uh, and that's basically all I'm saying. So thanks for watching. You know... Um, victims of this storm, you got to give me the thumbs up on this vid because, uh, you know, you're going to be taking warm showers and you're going to have heat in your house this weekend when it gets nice and chilly and cold. And, uh, you know, so give me the thumbs up on that and uh, sub to the channel if you like handyman tips and stuff like that because that's what I do is like handyman stuff. Um, from fixing this to that to everything. So, um, you know, I hope uh, everybody is safe and, uh, and makes it through this. And uh, you'll be taking nice warm showers while your neighbors, you know, with generators but don't know these tricks are going to be like plugging extension cords into this and that and that and this one thing at a time. When you got half your house powered up, your hot water heater running, the heat in your house... Uh, blowing, you know, hot air or whatever your baseboards are going and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, if you had a 220 generator, well, hey, all the better because you'll just power up the whole freaking house, you know.